Hi, I'm Diane with Greater American Construction. Welcome to the Youth Spotlight Program. We're happy you tuned in. We are pleased to partner with Spokane Talks Online to promote this wonderful new program. My husband and I started Greater American Construction over 23 years ago. We are a small family-owned remodeling contractor specializing in siding, windows, and roofing. Our focus has been beautifying residential homes in and around the Spokane area. Along with our dedicated foreman, who have been with our company for an average of 13 years, we pride ourselves on customer satisfaction. We have found Spokane is still a small community and feel the clients we've partnered with over the years will remember us long after they sell their home because of our relationships we've built. Greater American Construction supports many community organizations to include Girl Scouts, the Jonah Project, Chase Youth Foundation, Gonzaga Basketball, Miss Spokane, and many others. We are very excited to be part of the Youth Spotlight program by partnering with Spokane Talks Online and can't wait to see what our outstanding youth are doing here in our community. Please enjoy the segment and call Greater American Construction for all of your windows, siding, or roofing needs. Thank you. Alrighty, thanks for joining us for this May edition of Youth Spotlight brought to you by the Spokesman Review and Spokane Talks Online. We do want to thank our sponsor, Greater American Construction, for sponsoring this great series. And I'm here with our May nominee, Justin Kai, from, let me get this right, the Oaks Christian, I gotta look, the Oaks <laughs> Classical Christian Academy. And Justin, you, you have a pretty interesting list of things you have done that I have to say most kids your age would not even think <laughs> of, of doing. You know, you've performed in Carnegie Hall and you've won really prestigious awards at Music Fest here in Spokane. And you have really big plans after high school, you're a senior this year. So why don't you backtrack a little bit and tell us a little bit about your background in music, because that's really what, you know, your forte is. Right, yeah. And but specifically piano. Yeah, and well, and thanks for having me today, Colin. You're welcome. I'm really You're honored. Welcome. So when I was a kid, I started when I was around three or four years old, and how I started, it was actually kind of a tragic story, and I don't know if the camera can really pick this up, but if you notice on my left hand, I've got a pretty bad scar on my third and fourth finger, fingers. That's from piano? Oh, actually, it's how I got into piano. So bas yeah, basically what happened was, I stuck my hand under a moving treadmill and so the you know the conveyor belt just kind of scraped away all the skin and then so I had to get surgery and I had to get a little skin taken from my side so that they could clean it all up and over time you know my hand was healing but I, I always kept my hands closed mm -hmm. and my mom saw this as kind of a problem because if it healed that way I might not be able to open my hand ever again. Right. And so she thought, well, there's got to be a way that I can prevent that from happening. And so that's where piano came in because, you know, in piano, you always got to move your hands. Wow. So, yeah, I don't even really know if my mom had the intention of putting me in piano in the first place, but it was because of this hand injury that really got me into piano Isn't as a kid. It, that is amazing. And now you are, love piano. I do. You're very passionate very much, about piano yeah. playing. So isn't it kind of funny to you that that's how you got into it because of, yeah. you know? Yeah. That, yeah, that's amazing because I had just assumed that you grew really passionate about piano playing and, you know, sat down at the piano right. and started playing like a, <laughs> a madman. So that is really interesting. You know, you said you started when you were three, four, or five years old or so. Yes. So did it come easy to you at first or were you, did you think to yourself, okay, this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be? You know, at that age, it's kind of, it's hard to remember, but I mean, I'm assuming that with my whole hand injury, it, it must have been a little bit harder for me to really get going. I know I needed to exercise my hands a lot before I could, you know, start playing this or that. Right. So for me personally, I think it's been a little bit of a struggle trying to get into piano and trying to play fluently. Mm -hmm. And how do you think you know, there's always that comparison in life. You know, you're comparing yourself to others. You know, for you, I'm sure it's piano players, other piano players. 
how do you deal with that? Because I'm sure there's always someone, you know, for me, it's always, there's always someone better than I am right. at something. Right. So how do you, how do you take that? Do you take that as motivation? Do you kind of let that get to you sometimes? How do you deal with that? Yeah. Well, of course there is always someone better than me. And so, you know, sometimes that can kind of make me a little bit upset and it's like, oh, right. I can never seem to get better than this guy. Mm-hmm. But over time I realized that it's, only really a source of motivation because I realized mm-hmm. if there weren't anybody better than me, then there's no point for me to try to improve myself. Right. And so, yeah, I've really seen competition as a way to motivate me. It helps me want to practice harder when I'm kind of in a slump. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I like competition a lot. And I think, you know, at our age, it's really unique that we notice that because I think so many of our peers tend to take competition as something that's, you know, really horrible and <laughs> it, it totally discourages them from even trying. So I think it's pretty unique that you recognize that and take that in as motivation. So you mentioned before the interview that you performed in Germany, is that correct? Yes. And in Carnegie Hall and all of these places. How have you done those? How have you performed at all these different places? That's incredible to me. Well, Sometimes it comes from competitions where you send in a video and they say, okay, I like your playing. Would you like to come? Sometimes it's just by invite and so half the time I'm not even really sure how that happens, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to travel around. That's, that's one thing I really like about performing. It's the, the fun that you get from traveling all over the world and seeing different cultures and mm-hmm. you know even seeing other pianists who have been trained differently. So it's just this whole wide musical world out there that it's right. hard to find if you just kind of stay in Spokane. So what did you, how did you really build your piano career of sorts? Because Spokane, it's not necessarily the, you know, large metropolis that, you know, <laughs> right, right. some might think. Uh, but how, you know, I'm sure there's limited piano opportunities for you here. So how have you had to kind of reach out to other areas and build your standing in the music world that way right so i guess for me my first music competition was music fest Mm -hmm. i started maybe five or six years old and at that age you kind of you you know you take a few classes you get you get master lessons Uh but i've at that age no one really kind of takes it seriously because you're just trying to figure out if your kid really fits piano or not and so um thanks to my teacher of course not by my own merit i've had some more success at music fest and then over time, I just kept going back to Music Fest and doing those competitions. And then my teacher, when I got to a certain age, my teacher, uh, Carolyn Brett, uh-huh. she encouraged me to enter a state competition. And so, you know, I, I, when I was a little kid, I felt confident about myself. And right. so I thought, this is going to be easy. Right. No, I went in there and it was like, ooh, it nothing. Was <laughs> it, it was hard. And so at that age, um, you know, I thought I thought I was at the top of the world, but... I saw, you know, kids from Seattle, kids from other, you know, big cities, and I was kind of at the bottom of those kids, and so that really motivated me to try harder, and so I actually found a teacher from Seattle who came to Spokane to do lessons. His name is Dr. Peter Mack. Wow. Yeah, he encouraged me to do more competitions in Seattle, and so I began to do those, and then I would motivate myself to work harder, practice smarter, and so eventually I was able to kind of run with the, you know, the big guys in Seattle. And so after that, over time, I just, I was just kept being encouraged to go do bigger competitions. And, you know, I finally did national competitions, sometimes international, but it really started at Music Fest. And so it's just, it's really competition that has helped me be the pianist that I am now. And, you know, it's, it's so funny to me that something like Music Fest, you know, at a very you know, in the grand scheme of things at a very local level, how something like that can lead to so many much larger opportunities for you. So I think that's pretty incredible. What I want to know what you would say, what advice you would give to a young beginning piano player that's, you know, really struggling uh, with the whole learning of piano because it really is not as easy as some people like to think it is. So what would you say? What would you say to that person? You know, I've actually been confronted with this question before, and I guess what I would say is, it's kind of cliche, but mm-hmm. don't give up on what you're doing. 
And in this whole world, you, you a lot of the time you see the success of this musician or that, and you think, oh man, am I the only one who struggles with this? Mm. That was something I struggle with, but I realized over time that a lot of other pianists, they also struggle with their practice. They don't think they can hit a certain spot, but when you just come back over time, you can just, if you persevere more um, with the right teaching, with the right way of practice, you'll definitely get there. I don't think there is a person who just can't do it. Right. And so, like I said, a lot of the time you think you're the only one mm -hmm. who can't seem to do it, but trust me, I felt it. You're definitely not the only one. So that's what I would say. I love that. Thank you. So you have pretty big plans after high school. You're a senior this year. You're going to Boston College. I'm sure you're going to consider your music career. For sure, yeah. Okay. And what do you plan on doing with that? Well, actually, and I haven't told a whole lot of people this, but my dream in the future is to kind of create a unique music style of my own. Mm -hmm. And you heard of, or you might have heard of people like piano guys, and they just kind of they've made their own thing. I kind of wanted to try that out, and I've always been a classical pianist for my whole life, and I love it. But in the future, I thought, what if I could? you know, bring some of that creativity into the modern world mm. and take maybe some sounds or some music that people have never heard before. And so that's what I hope to find in college. And, you know, who knows, it may happen, it might not, but that's one of my goals. That, that's incredible. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. I, you are wise by, beyond your years, and I wish you the best in all of your future endeavors. Uh, I look forward to seeing you, you know, in at large international competitions, you know, playing the piano and following your career. So thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. And thank all of you for joining us for this Youth Spotlight series during the month of May. And thank you, Greater American Construction, for sponsoring this series. We'll see you next month.